I am the chief servant of soil. They call me the founder <laughs> and chairman, but I call myself the chief servant. It's been an absolute delight uh, to be part of this, uh, you know, whole journey of first being interviewed by TV and Arvind, and then uh, finding your story along with these wonderful other colleagues in the book. And then this idea that we should also honor all the wonderful Funny, people yes. Funny. Here, uh, in sh listening to their stories. So we are calling this session Stories of Inspired Leadership. So from soil, stories of inspired leadership, from the school of inspired leadership. So from soil, from soil. So it's like a wonderful acronym. And I'm so very happy that we have the three gems today. We have uh, Dr. Anil Khandelwal, uh, who I have known from his very young days. Both of us have known each other. And uh, of course, it, has, it was also a privilege to work with him on uh, leadership development with his top 300 leaders, where we work very closely with him. And he was kind enough to also feature our work in his book. Then with Ashokji, Dr. Ashok Balyan, whom also I had the privilege of doing several retreats with him as the co-director of this wonderful retreat that we did together. And I really cherished the time of learning from him and seeing him in action. Anuranjita is uh, an amazing colleague. I have met her a few times, but I must confess I haven't got to know her as well as I would have liked. So maybe we'll correct that in the future sometime. But uh, Anuranjita is so inspiring to also read your story. I just wanted to come in today and to, you know, to say that uh, this is a wonderful series we are launching. It's, uh, our students are very privileged. But on this webinar, we also have several friends from industry and even the social sector who may join. And I'm also happy to welcome our alum. The prodigal girl returns, Isha. So welcome, uh, welcome uh, Isha to this forum. Thank and, you. So much. Uh, and, and you know, all our amazing students are here. Professor Arjya Chakravarti, the chair of HR is here. Our director, uh, Dr. Vijaya is here. So I said, you know, thank you. And uh, I just want to hand over now the baton to Vijaya, and I'm going to enjoy the whole thing by putting myself on uh, mute. Yeah, I think Mehavgeet, would you want to take, Akshay, Mehavgeet, do you want to start? Sure, ma'am. Sure. Uh, good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for joining and being a part of this webinar. Sometimes in life, we take a leap of faith and uh, this leap is not about uh, getting from one side to other, but simply about taking the leap and trusting the universe that it will support your wings and you may soar high. Today, we have gathered here to learn from those who took this leap and achieved and soared high in their journeys. I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Anil K. Khandelwal, Mr. Shok K. Balyan and Ms. Anuranjita Kumar for uh, today's panel and the HRLP and the LP cohort of SOIL along with uh, various other people who have joined this uh, webinar. This interaction will be coordinated by the student members or uh, student moderators, which is Akshay Chhabra, Anupriya Srivastava, and myself, Mehati Kaur. I hope everyone will be able to gather as much learnings as possible, which will prove to be instrumental in making our future experiences worthwhile. Uh, we would like now to... Um, Welcome our director, Dr. T.G. Vijaya, for her words, please. Thank you, Mahadeep. Um, esteemed panelists, guests, alumni, um, students, and my colleagues, good evening. You know, okay. Peter Druck Drucker's observation on leadership is lifting a person's vision to higher sights, the raising of a person's performance to a higher standard, the building of a personality beyond its normal limitations. The challenge of leadership is to be strong, but not rude, to be kind, but not weak, to be bold, but not a bully, to be thoughtful, but not lazy, be humble, yet not timid, be proud, not arrogant, have humor, but with a folly, but without folly, I'm sorry. Mr. Arvind Agarwal and Professor T. V. Rao in Leaders in the Making include in-depth interviews of 30 HR leaders drawn from public as well as the private sector. Why 30? Perhaps it's a read for the month. 
Interestingly, the numerological essence of the number 30 resonates with and supports creative expression and encourages it in others. 30 is imaginative. It is an effective communicator. It's tolerant and joyful and dynamic. The HR leaders reflect this spirit. As we read through these wonderful professional and personal journeys of these leaders, it's the same spirit and emotion that is echoed. And we, I think we're very privileged to have the three of them with us today. It's one thing to read about their life stories and a totally different thing to actually listen to them. And uh, on behalf of all of us at Soil, I again, I'm very thankful to the three of you to have agreed to be a part of this panel um, discussion. And I'm sure we're going to have an evening with a lot of learning and new insights. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Vijaya, for your words. Uh, I would like to take a moment and also welcome Ms. Isha, uh, our, our beloved alum of Soil. And uh, without further ado, uh, the industry leader, leaders that we have today with us uh, are the ones uh, who were able to strike balance between business needs and value addition uh, and make a thriving workplace for all. Uh, the first panelist that we have with us is Mr. Anil Khandelwal. Uh, he's a transformational leader with a background in human resource development. Uh, he has used HR interventions as a measure, uh, as a mean uh, of engaging with employees and building leadership within organizations. Uh, he has held various leadership positions, uh, including serving as CEO of two large public sector banks in India and chairman of a committee uh, on HR in public sector banks. Uh, in these roles, uh, he has been able to successfully turn around and transform organizations. Uh, this has led to him being recognized as one of the 100 most powerful CEOs in India. Uh, he is a recipient of a number of awards, including the Asian Banker Singapore's Lifetime Achievement Award and the National HR Network's Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, in addition to his corporate experience, Mr. Kandelwal has served uh, as a consultant for the UNDP and was a visiting professor at the Asian Institute of Management, Philippines. He has also advised international uh, consulting firms and trained over 5,000 leaders in India and abroad. I would like to welcome Mr. Kandelwal and thank you in advance for your time and being uh, present in this panel. Over to Mehergi. We would now like to welcome Mr. Shoke Balyan for being a part of this uh, webinar. He's known as the HR alchemist who struck the right chemistry, a business leader who raised the bar of HR practices by transforming pub public sector mindsets. Currently, the chairman and director at Carmine Energy PT Singapore, Mr. Balyan has held senior leadership positions both in public and private sectors organizations. He was former director at HR at ONGC, managing director and CEO at Petronet LNG Limited and CEO for oil and gas at Reliance Group. His major contributions include preparing for the first 25-year perspective plan of ONGC for the years 1990 to 2015, establishing and demonstrating the production of coal bed methane for the first time in the country, establishing ONGC's first 51 megawatt wind power plant, along with constructing and commissioning a C2 plus extraction plant that was unique in the world. He has held the position of president at the Delhi Management Association and was national president of the National Institute of Personal Management. His many recognitions include Business Today's Best CEO Awards in 2014. Thank you so much, sir, for joining here today. And uh, all of us together are definitely looking forward to all the learnings that we could gather from you. Thank you. Over to Anupriya, please. Thank you, Mayor. Hello, everyone. It's my pleasure to be welcoming Ms. Anuranjita Kumar. Ms. Anuranjita, former Chief Human Resource Officer, City South Asia, began her career with Procter and Gamble in 1994 and joined Citibank in 1995. An element of XLRI, she worked across the globe in multiple roles and became the first South Asian woman to be appointed as head of HR, global banking, the Europe, the Middle East, Africa region in 2007. Currently co-founder and CEO at VAs, she's a part of 
board of various organization and professional bodies and recognized among the most powerful women leaders by fortune in 2013 she has always focused on strategic capabilities of hr talent management and cultivating a shared and vibrant corporate culture from city she moved to royal bank of scotland or as in the, as a md of hr and thereafter started the women in technology forum that is wit to help increase the number of women professionals in science technology engineering and management by offering them the right training skills and education we are glad that you are here with us ma'am we would love to hear from you thank you so much for being the part of this webinar so uh, without further ado uh, first of all i would like to request all the all the people who are present in this webinar in case you have any questions you can please drop it in the question and answer uh, uh, box and uh, first of all i would like to ask a question to the panelists present here like uh, while reading through your biographies in the leaders in the making uh, we see that it was a journey uh, towards reaching a point where hr came to your path uh, so for example in mr ashok's journey it was uh, mr subir raha uh, who prompted him to take human resource or and for mr khandelwal it was it was mentioned that he did not choose hr as a profession but the profession chose him and for ms anuranjita kumar it was mentioned that she was a medical student but later on decided uh, to go for psychology uh, in to pursue in her career and to know what brought you to the field of hr and uh, can you help us understand the nuances that you faced uh, during this shift uh, i'll start with mr khandelwal if it's okay so you're on mute sir so we still can't can you hear can you hear you now sir yeah first of all thank you very much soil and its team and especially my great friend uh, anil sachdev uh, i uh, really admire him for his innovative spirit and even for this book the kind of idea that he has got that why not he bring together four people every alternate first day and really hear from them their own stories anil thank you and i my salute to your uh, you know uh, uh, this innovative uh, spirit uh, i was lucky to be invited uh, to work with anil on the board of soil and i saw the kind of passion the kind of institution that he was trying to create and i am today very happy to see the product of soil uh, the way they are conducting and he has al always put the students at the center of things so thank you very much now as regards my uh, uh, you know uh, my, my coming to hr actually yes uh, i had actually done chemical engineering and i came i was not really happy uh, about that and uh, i belong to a family uh, of sociologists and uh, somehow and my um, one of the maternal uncle is a leading publisher of sociology so in, during holidays i used to study a lot of books on sociology and all it fascinated me as a subject so, sociology psychology philosophy and then i by some luck i joined a bank as a probationary officer and i found in my two years complete breakdown of human systems on the other side customers who are human beings nobody to bother about them those days intense unionism and my own socialization in the bank that i got an appointment letter that you, you know you will be induction program four weeks you will be rotated here and there and i was made to waste two years on a single desk and that created such disenchantment that i wrote a letter to the chief of personnel those days which was a kind of a sacrilegious writing to top management personnel directly but i tell you this man replied to my letter in the kind of joy and happiness by that time i had done my mba from university of rajasthan and he said look we are advertising for the position of personal manager personal officers why don't you apply i applied and i was selected and rest is the history that then i stayed for 25 to 26 years so in that sense 
I, I, but mainly those were the days where we worked only in industrial relations and HR was simply coming as a fashionable esoteric uh, uh, function in, a, uh, uh, in the banking industry at that time. But nobody took it seriously because there was so much of IR problems. And therefore, those who are doing HRD, the union issued a circular. It is nothing but holiday and recreation department that they send people to places for training. And one circular came, these people are highly redundant desperados. So you can imagine that our socialization in HR function was, uh, you know, through, uh, uh, through, through this welcoming uh, events. Thank you very much, Mr. Khandelwal. Uh, may I request Mr. Balyan uh, to please share your journey yeah thank you very much once again uh, vijaya ji and your young team of um, mehji tanupriya and akshay um, uh, excellent way to conduct this and i'm really excited to be part of this and uh, i'm not sure what all um, i can share but uh, uh, i mean as i started my career after my studies from iit delhi uh, i spent few years in a shriram group first and uh, that was a, to my mind, uh, impacted me in terms of some discipline in working. And uh, I like to share that uh, today when we talk about biometric, you know, uh, roles and 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 uh, when you join the in the morning the office that you're you're present there. Uh, uh, way back in 1972, when I started my career, we used to we were asked to punch our card. And we were supposed to be there in the office by nine o'clock. We were permitted to be five minutes late three times in a month. So if it is 9.06, then we were asked that why you were late on that. And, and, and if, if the explanation was satisfactory, then it was okay. Otherwise we were asked, and many of our colleagues as well, were asked to submit a half day casual leave. So that was the kind of discipline, even by leaving um, uh, the office at 5.30 when it used to close, we used to punch our card. So, so that timing and that discipline of work uh, was very much sort of starting as a, I think got into our normal routine, routine of working. Apart from that, I think uh, the work was research oriented. So we were very excited about doing some new things, new experiments. From that environment, I... Um, sort of uh, moved to ONGC and one of the important person who really provoked me was my father. Father, And he said that, well, if you want to work, uh, why not work for the government of India? And um, private organizations are fine. They look after you well. But um, uh, having worked himself for government of India, and uh, he said, why not you work on that? So that was in my mind. So uh, when I applied uh, for two, three organizations, I got selected in ONGC. And uh, I, I found that it's a good organization. It's also uh, partly technical, doing research works in, in oil and gas field. Why not join that? So from that uh, private sector experience, I joined ONGC. And um, when I came there, um, uh, I attended first the office there. Uh, the office would open somewhere around 10.30, 11. The officers would come around 11 o'clock. The, the sweeper would come around uh, 10 o'clock. Um, and I was there as per my normal practice in the office around 9, 9.30. So I asked actually the, the uh, in charge of the security there, they give me the keys, I'll open my lab myself and I'll start work on that. So that was a shock to me that uh, but there was no focus on work. There was nobody pushing you and telling you what needs to be done. How is the organization doing? What is the agenda? Uh, so I was actually in a stage of shock. And for two, three months, I'll be frank that I, I was not sure whether I have made the right um, uh, choice of this changing to NGC. But then I must say that each organization, there are certain wonderful seniors who, who took as a nat natural instinct, they, they, they function as coach and mentors, you know. 
And the same way happened, the director of that institute, uh, Keshav De Malviya Institute of Petroleum Exploration, Dharadun there where I joined, the director there um, and, and the head of our uh, uh, you know, uh, department, both of them were so wonderful person that any book that would come, you would mark or ask somebody to come and read. And that's how I was started into this thing that he uh, received new books for the library. The library books would come first to the director's table. He will send it to different people there, ask their, read this chapter and what is your comment? How do you see this? Can we do this something? And then the our uh, departmental head would come around five o'clock in the evening and spend one and a half hours, two hours to discuss and all the... So that actually provoked me that, oh, there are many things that we can be doing here. There is definitely tremendous amount of, uh, you know, uh, uh, options to work and then freedom to work there. So I think we should look at that. And that's how slowly I got into the ONGC. And I was in the field of oil exploration, oil and gas. Uh, you do exploration work, uh, analyze a lot of samples, see uh, part of the entire team of, um, you know, geologists, uh, geophysicists, uh, reservoir engineers and, and chemists and all together. And then we synthesize data and then say, okay, in these areas, we should look for oil and gas. So that's how my career started. I spent a few years in the lab. Then I was sent to uh, a field work, which was totally new to me. Then I, I spent about a year there and then learned a few new things. And I, I by my own uh, choice, I never said no to any transfer. So I went to field. Uh, from there, I was transferred again to uh, a regional office, given the task that you please work on on a, on a perspective plan for the complete organization, uh, what we should be doing, how things should move for next five years, what all resources we need, what are financials we need, what are technologies we need. So I think I worked on that. That was very exciting, actually. And that's how I got involved into this. But at that point in time, I must say, HR was nowhere there. It was actually known as administration. And, 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 and the, the, the office uh, names and all was also administration. And then it was personnel and administration. And people used to really, functional people in different uh, departments used to really mock about p and They should say this is only Panga and Adanga. They only create problems that there's no HR or perspective there. So that's how it was there. And that was the perception in, in ONGC for several years. Um, and I moved from in my career uh, from uh, different positions. And I was uh, at, at um, Calcutta uh, as, a, as a in charge of one of the exploration basin, as we call it, area, larger area in charge of the exploration when the new CEO actually joined. And um, he would he visited uh, Calcutta some four or five times in a year. Every time he would have a review and have a lot of questions. And he said, I want to see this. How do you do this? How do you do that? And I thought it's a regular routine kind of a review by any CMD or a chairman that would do for work, whether we are on track or there are any problems and all. After that fourth, fifth visits, I came to know a rumor that, uh, you know, people started talking that uh, I'm being shifted to HR. And uh, I, I was disturbed. I was actually quite perturbed. And, and I said that uh, um, uh, how it is possible. And, and, and I have no interest in HR. And uh, am I not doing a good job? Why I'm being shifted there? So I decided the next time when the chairman comes to Calcutta, I will seek time and I will directly speak to him. Uh, as to what is this and, and why it is needed and is, is it true or not. So next time when the chairman came, I sought time from him uh, after regular routine work and all and review and all. Uh, he said, okay, come on. And in the evening, we sat in his uh, room. I said, sir, I want to ask you, I've heard that I'm being shifted to HR. So first he laughed and uh, then he said, okay, you sit down here, we'll talk. And uh, then he said, uh, Look, I have come from, and he was director HR himself in Indian Oil Corporation when he came as chairman. He said, I have been examining this organization. It has a great potential. It can grow into an international company of a high ranking. 
but the systems procedures are absolutely out of sync. They have that they're, they're going to really create troubles. So if, if this organization needs to really grow and be an agile and competitive and uh, you know organization, then it has to go through the reforms of the HR. And HR platform can really uh, elevate this. And I've been looking for a person uh, who could really drive that. And I have come across three, four suggestions and I've noted all of them for the last 10 months or so. And I'm focused on that. And this is true that I really want you to drive the HR. And I said, sir, I have no experience. I'm not confident whether I can drive it or not. And he said, no, I'm confident because I've seen you working on that and uh, uh, we will issue uh, necessary. So I was uh, the entire personal and administration department was restructured that time. And it was renamed as human resources department. New posts were created like human resource development, chief of the human resource development, chief of the uh, employee relations, and many other different, very task oriented kind of uh, positions were created. And I was put as the first chief HRD uh, in the organization with, I had no experience on that. And I was also in the hierarchy uh, not really uh, uh, senior to, uh, I mean, there were many people senior to me in the HR department as such. So it took time for me to really uh, create that networking. But I, I think it was a natural way of my of working that I could build those bridges with all senior people, junior people. And I always involved my younger team, even at all places, even as the head of the exploration there, I had some three, four younger people to really help me in day-to-day -day working. I think that helped me. And I slowly, I gained a sort of confidence and developed my agenda as to, yes, I see that what, what are the problems? And I think I had the advantage. Having worked on the functional side for so many years uh, in different work centers, I knew what are the issues, main issues of the people there, different functions, different levels, different uh, locations. So I, 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 I was perhaps better prepared to, to deal with that. And that helped me developing the agenda. And I prioritized few things as to this are the important things that I need to tackle with this and give that confidence. But I developed those agenda and had detailed mm. discussion with <laughs> the associations, unions, different levels, senior people to get their perspective in finalizing certain policy matters and all. And I think that gave me a, a, a little confidence and, and developed that kind of a transparency, networking with people and working in it some time frame. That was, I think, that, that was my, my sort of uh, introduction to HR, which I was very afraid of initially. But I think having spent some time in HR, I thought, yes, this is very exciting. And I think we can make a change. We can make a difference in the organization. And the focus was on how do you build that team? How do you build those policy frameworks on that and on different fronts on that? And then uh, for a big organization of around 35, 37,000 people, regular employees, it was a task actually. But then I think slowly we embarked upon that and that's how I got into HR. Many Thank things that I can share, but I think slowly, I mean, just to get into the HR and, and, and really it was exciting, must say. Uh, many things uh, we did uh, uh, for the first time in a PSU uh, you know, environment where you have a, a kind of a domain defined that you can't work beyond that. Uh, but then I think we could, we could make a difference. And uh, in the oil and gas sector, um, all the companies, there were about more than a dozen companies in the oil and gas sector who were always look forward to what ONGC is doing. So let's do that. Why they are doing this? Uh, this is a good practice. Why not we do that? So I think we were, we were seen as a, as a changing organization. And from a typical government organization where, you know, it's really a, a government uh, culture to today's ONGC, I think we can compare it with any international MNC in terms of its functioning style on that. So I think there's a great change that has happened. Also, there was a change of, from commission to a corporate corporatization. It became ONGC as a corporate in 1994. But I think the, the transition to a, a, a vibrant corporate organization, I feel HR and management styles 
have great contribution in bringing this transition forward. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, so, Anupriya. So, uh, I would like to know, uh, ma'am, your views as well uh, about what all challenges and what your experiences it was it, uh, you you had uh, along like in your entire journey. So, it would be great to know your your insights as well. So, you know, I was just so mesmerized with, uh, you know, what uh, Khandelwal ji and Ashok ji were uh, sharing that uh, there's so much learning from their experience. For me, I come from a family of two doctors. So we are a very typical Indian family. Ki bhai, ab parents doctor hain, to we were two sisters. Ki ek ko to doctor banna so I was the older one. So I was kind of... Uh, uh, motivated ki bhai tum hi le lo pmt and uh, dekho kya hota hai so um i was pure sciences till school and i took my cpmt i got through kgmc which is where my mother graduated from went to the medical school didn't like it and uh, i remember diwali time i came home and i told my parents ki maza nahi aa raha hai ye theek nahi lag raha hai so my mother thought ki bhai padhai badhai zyada hai to she is kind of fretting. So I said, no, it's not about studies. I'm not enjoying it. Now, remember, we belong to a generation where if you get engineering or you get medicine, then they are good professions. You don't leave those seats. So I think at 17 and 18, you don't know anything better than that. And that is how old I was. So, you know, we had a long debate. And because I had stayed in boarding for a long period of my schooling, one thing which it teaches you, and by the way, boarding life is very good, not like Tarin yes. Zami per movie you watch. But uh, so, but one thing it did teach me was that uh, take your decisions. And I was not feeling good about doing that course after six months. So my father uh, asked me, Ki, bhai, kya karna hai? Chalo, ye karna, kya karna hai? So I told him, I said, I don't know what I want to do, but I know what I don't want to do. You know, it can be very unnerving for a parent. And um, mm -hmm. so I think after much uh, debate at home, my father amongst three women was always the peacemaker said, okay, so, you know, what would you like to do? So I did my tic tac and I said, Ab sciences karne ka to koi fayda hai nahi, engineering or uh, doctoring to karna nahi hai, commerce milega nahi kyunki kiya nahi tha. So by default, it's humanity. So after much deliberation, I said, psychology karenge. Psychology kyu karenge? Kuch nahi pata tha us time. Uh, kyunki it's closer to science and, you know, I kind of enjoy the, if I can't be a doctor, I'll be a psychiatrist type of thing. So he said, okay, you go to DU because that's where I wanted to go. But you have to get a hostel. If you don't get a hostel, we are not leaving you there alone because Delhi is not secure. So if you don't get you're going back to Lucknow. So that's what happened. And I genuinely believe that many times in my life that where you will it, you manifest it. And that's really what happened. So I went and ran around and finally managed to get one seat in a hostel, moved to psychology. I think my mother didn't ever tell me, but probably gave up and saying, Chalo, teen, char saal mein iski kara denge, ek bahut ho gaya. Um, but that was not to be. But I think what that incident did was it put the entire onus and accountability of life on me. Right, the decisions I took, the good was mine and the bad was mine. I couldn't complain anymore ki meri mammi ne bola ya papa ne bola, none of that. Okay. because I took the decision. So it was scary. It was daunting, but it was also very liberating. Okay. And so I did my psychology and because I felt that I was under tremendous pressure to prove that this was the right decision, I worked very hard and I landed up, you know, being the DU topper in psychology for a while and that goaded me further. So I was all set after psychology and there's a pattern in my life just when I think I'm all sorted something, some googly happens. So I was all sorted and said, okay, I'll take my GRE. I will go to the US now. And I really like psychology. So my professor said, no, no, you're not research type. Ki nahi ho. Tum aisa karo, tum cat le lo. I didn't know what cat is. You know, my parents are doctors and engineers. So I had no idea about management. So I said, what kya hota hai? So he, she said, no, no, this management and MBA agra was called bahut hai, tum kar lo. And uh, you see where we go from there. So I took my cat. I got a few calls from IMS and XLRI and all of that. And I chose HR because I felt that was very close to psychology. So for me, HR was not an accident. It was a choice. 
and uh, I chose it because I specialized in industrial psychology. Having said that, I had no idea what HR is supposed to do. I only knew that it was a lot to do with people and running of the organization. That was my definition of HR. I went to the business school. It was a breeze. Let me be honest. I mean, those of you who um, you know are studying MBA in my at least for me, I'm not too many excellers here, but. Uh, I think uh, I kind of had worked so hard during university that I kind of said, Chalo, to ab, I can take it a little easy. So apart from, of course, getting my two-year degree, I found my future husband there. Uh, I joined PNG and he joined Unilever. So we had no idea, as you can see, that, you know, there'll be a problem. Two years down the line, there was a problem because, you know, you can't have an alliance between Lux and Kame or Surf Excel or Ariel. So for the sake of our marital bliss, one of us had to leave. And both of us started looking around and since Sandeep is not here, I can safely say I was more employable and that's how I landed in City, which was a long journey for me. So for me, you know, this whole thing about what does HR do started at campus. And, you know, my husband was BM. He's a sales and marketing guy. And in XLRI, there are two different groups. One is BM, one is IR. So most of the time, the BM guys would ask, what do you think about HR? I don't understand what HR so I used to tell them, tumhari salary mein decide karungi. Ye bas yaad rakhna. Baaki ka kuch aur farak nahi padta. So I think for me, because it was a choice, it was something you were inducted. I think somewhere Excel teaches you how to deal with that. When I entered PNG, you know, it kind of came more smoothly to me. I think the challenge happened when you get into real work, not as a management trainee. When I started to get into middle management or senior leadership role, I did roles outside HR and then came back to HR. So I did jobs in private banking. I did jobs in investment banking. And it's a long story. But, you know, one of the more, I would say, if I was to go back in time and say one experience which taught me a lot as a professional, not just as HR, was when we handled the financial crisis. A lot of you would have read in books, uh, would have seen movies. And those of you have seen the worlds of Wall Street, I lived it. Um, so I was in London at that point of time. And um, the first day I walked into, I was, I moved from India to Singapore, then New York, then London. And the first day I walked into Canary Wharf, um, I had moved from HR into the banking side. Uh, the conference room was full of white men, uh, 45 and above, wearing black and gray suits, half balding. And here I was 38, 39, wearing my red jumper, a brown woman. Okay, looking crazy from every perspective. And when I introduced myself, I said, well, I add color from every perspective on this table right now. So, but it was intimidating because, you know, I'd never faced a, such a homogeneously white male um, environment. But what I learned as a woman, I think, and this is where HR experience added, it heightened my empathy, it heightened my sensitivity and not just, you know, duck, 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 how do I get MA deals in? You know, it's almost like reading the tea leaves. And initial days were very, very tough because the more they put the the more they pushed me back, the more I persisted. So the more they resisted, the more I persisted. And I think my HR experience held me good in terms of just the alignment and reading the tea leaves and working through it. As the crisis came on to us, I actually took over the role of CEO, CAO, which meant I was back in HR handling all the internal stuff. And it was tough really tough because what they don't teach you in textbook is how to handle transformation you know it's good to be in a school where you get the grounding but the real storms when they happen uh, are you know magical moments I mean those moments really make you so for me that was one of those moments where you don't know you'll have your job tomorrow you know there was it wasn't about HR it wasn't about sales it wasn't about marketing it wasn't about banking it's just being a solid human resources professional for the business so it wasn't hr i'm talking about just a human professional for the business and i think there were days where we didn't know the bank will survive there were days we didn't know uh, we will have a job we didn't know what the future looked like and when you go through a dark tunnel one of the things i learned was keep going because there will be light it just sometimes takes longer than shorter so for me hr is what i chose and I think there were certain experiences and skills that I picked up in HR. It's not the softy, softy function. You know, HR has a lot of tough stuff to do. Um, you know, the amount of restructurings that we led, 
you know, firing people is not an easy thing to do. And especially firing your friends is not an easy thing to do. How do you preserve somebody's dignity when you're letting them go off a job is a very tough. I don't know how to even teach it to somebody till you do it yourself, but it's tough. And many times when people would cry to me, their families would call me. I'll say, look, I also don't know. I'll have my job tomorrow. But for the fear of dying, you don't stop living. You know, this is life. So I think there is a there is a soft side of any profession, be it CEO, be it sales and marketing, be it finance, be it HR. And there is a tough side. And in my language, HR is a lot about tough love. Uh, and, you know, you have to almost walk that uh, balancing line between what's right to do for the organization and what's right to do for the individual. And so all my life, I balanced that. And so when I started my entrepreneurial journey two years back, you know, the first thing I got and took me back to my days in banking. I remember, you know, we are a, a we we do upskilling and employment of women. We are a for-profit company because I decided not to do a NGO or a Section 8 company uh, because there is the VC money doesn't come into these places. I come from BFSI. So I was very clear that we need to channel the industry money into this place. Otherwise, the money is only going into deep tech. So I launched this. And there is a batchmate of mine from Excel who runs a very big fundraise company. So I said, we raise raise any company. Ke liye. So he looked at me. And because you know they know me, so sometimes they're very candid with me. He said, yeah, I'll tell you something very candidly. You're the wrong gender. You're the wrong age. Okay. And you're on the wrong mission. VC ka paisa nahi aayega is par right tech lagao anu okay ek co-founder male co-founder lekar aao aur ye thoda na hr vichar hatao yahan se aur make it a real stuff and i said nahi yaar you know this is what we believe in this is the mission and of course in spite of him warning me i persisted and we raised our first round we are on to our second round um but it's not been easy i mean there are lots of stories i can tell you about entrepreneurship uh, but i think reflecting back Going back to my experience in HR, it again helped me. You know, simple stuff like as an entrepreneur, when you build your team and you have only so much money on the table, all about connect and relationship. People work with you because they believe in you, not because you're giving them a fat paycheck because I can't even afford that right now. So I think all that experience on the softer side and the tougher side comes back and you move with a certain pace. So sorry, long-winded answer. I don't know whether I've answered that fully, Anupriya, but I just, I'm a bit of a storyteller, so I thought I'll share my experiences. That was really inspiring, but thank you so much. So we'll be moving to the next question, maybe, if you can take oh, the next sure, question. Definitely. Uh, I'll say, you know, when the point of uh, how HR is not a softy, thing and everything was brought up, I feel now people are gradually moving towards understanding uh, the importance and the role HR plays in business in a larger picture as well. And uh, that would bring me to the next uh, question that we have for everybody, that um, as a young aspiring person in this uh, domain, that uh, is a professional's overall growth dependent solely on academic success? And uh, while on our professional journeys, how should we drive our personal growth along with it? Uh, Dr. Khandelwal, uh, would it be fine if we start with you, please? Yeah, I, uh, I, I misunderstood the first question. I thought how we landed sure. in HR. So rest of the tend, I rest of the journey, I didn't tell. So give me five minutes to tell that before I come to those questions. And uh, so you see. Working in a commercial organization, there is a commercial culture of compromises that I was observing all the time. And since in the bank, we are highly commercial institution, profit producing culture, the operating managers were having huge problems of industrial relations, huge problems from unions and employees. By that time, I think if you, uh, you know, uh, uh, read my profile, I will jump a little bit and come to that. I came to Bank of Baroda Staff College as a core faculty in that, that I pursued HR research, industrial relations research. Something was, uh, uh, you know, burning inside me as to why management is not able to support branch managers 
these people came to various training program and they had sob stories of higher management that they don't support whenever we write to them they say handle the situation tactfully so i decided to do my phd on managerial strategies in industrial relations in bank of baroda and we had a very proactive general manager and the board who gave me permission for me i was in ahmedabad so i am ahmedabad was there i registered under professor narain shet who was then professor of uh, personnel management at ir and later became director of im ahmedabad simultaneously i had oday parik and tv rao one of the co authors of this book who provided me perspective on hrd and this is what was bothering me to create some sort of sangam between ir and hrd while the problems were real ir at the branch level they didn't want to buy softies like motivation training and behavioral science and all that they first wanted ir to be solved so after my phd and uh, uh, you know and the phd revealed very clearly that it is the oscillation in management policy and buying peace because of commercial culture lest there is an agitation and the lest business suffer that that is the real problem in the hope that we can run bank better the in the process what happens that domains were diluted the unions and officers association entered the management domain and they were very poor driving the bank with the result that the operating managers were finding it extremely difficult then came the turning point for me and by that time unions and association i i had also joined the mainstream as agm and they were getting very tired of my this combination of ir and hrd and let me share with you that i wonder whether unions in india genuinely have taken hrd because there are very few collaborative projects between the management and trade unions about the people there is a crisis of domains so then one fine morning i was transferred to banking operation and let me share with you although when i was transferred the chairman told that possibly this can open gateway for you to sit on my seat but i think it was out of probably contempt for hrd and hr professional and the pressure from trade unions and i had a real dilemma to either stay or resign but i said look we teach in hrd that learning to learn is our credo so without any experience in banking i landed in the operations and the thing that i always wanted to do to make the life of operating managers little better so i revealed my heart to manager that look here you know i am not a banker career banker i don't know your craft they said that sir our biggest problem is industrial relation and hr i said you delegate it up to me and that's how i learned banking from them that's how we created uh, a, a, you know a a a, a little better operational life in the branches and we performed the fact that in my first operate oper- operational uh, uh, you know assignment i was promoted that shows that the bank that that we were able to turn around i really saw this sangam and this synergy between ir hrd and business in the real operation then i was transferred to what we call the battle ground of all industrial relation that is calcutta and calcutta was a nightmare i think you will have to read my book what we could do there but in short i will I, i would like to share with you that we practiced a new style of management based on human resource development interventions with marxist union they have huge amount of credibility building because they thought that calcutta is being treated as an amputated leg in the corporate body that is if is the written off zone we worked there we brought calcutta to a a performance category and did many many achievements with the result that without serious banking background the government of india elevated me to board position 
you can imagine calcutta that for simple job rotation of employee from one branch to another branch in the past there was 40 days agitation so we could achieve all those things including computerization including job rotation and the government then put me on to the uh, you know executive director in the same bank and later of course bank of baroda where a huge amount of transformation we architected based on culture change and there are many many dimension anil helped us when i was chairman we invited because i didn't want foreign consultants who don't understand the cultural perspective of india or who and you know they give very ready made solutions so we thought who is the person in this country who understands india who understand the ethos of india who understand people of india and that's how we invited anil's firm grow talent i don't know whether by that time yes it was grow talent and anil helped us create a an edifice of leadership and took up the project of developing 300 leaders and i'm very happy to share especially anil with you that the it has continued since then today bank of baroda which had come to number 4 position when i took over continues to be in last 15 years number 1 bank in the nationalized sector when we say public sector state bank is included when we say nationalized sector state bank is also so we are so this has been a story of sustainable transformation through human resource and leadership intervention and our focus has been culture change and part of this culture change was reaching out to the front line 70% of employees are in front line and they were considered as sole proprietary concerns of trade unions i think we broke that barrier and we announced huge number of programs sampark paramarsh khoj direct helpline for employees to chairman direct help the the talent counseling centers for employees now all these together i must say that the transformation is story the entire credit goes to 40000 employees is spread in 3000 branches at that time and it has been life's satisfaction that we could change the culture several management institutes have written cases on our transformation the several researchers have done that what made difference in this transformation that took place in bank of baroda that that that's the only thing i wanted to share my entire career profile how we had gone about i know it is not in trailer of a trailer but then uh, 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 i thought i'll share this now your question i have i think let others do that i'll come in the last for your question Thank yeah. you, Dr. Thank you Deva. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Um, may I request Mr. Ashok to please uh, share his views? Uh, sir, you're on mute. Mr. Ashok, you're on mute. Yeah, I think you you need to um, repeat the uh, uh, repeat the question. I was so yeah, engrossed in the. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Mr. Khandelwal's, you know, uh, narration was wonderful. Sure, sure, definitely, sir. So the question came from the perspective that um, there are a lot of uh, young aspiring people, you know, who are going to join uh, the industry in a couple of months, and uh, collectively we would want to ask that: Is the professional's overall growth uh, dependent solely on academic success? And uh, as during the professional journey, uh, what should a person? Uh, how should a person drive their personal growth as well? Well, I think it's a it's a difficult question, Mr. Pete. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, every person um, has to chalk out a program, a path, and and follow it with conviction. Actually, that's very important. That. Um, Uh, uh one should be able to clearly see that in the overall organization where he fits in he or she fits in there what is the kind of contribution he can make and is it is it really relevant for the organization or not so these are the important things that one should really ask and and uh, and and be able to contribute and if you are not able to really see that where your contribution is actually resulting in the organization it becomes very difficult there is a disconnect there it's very important that you see your role in the overall organization where it is contributing 
And if you are able to connect that, I think you are right on, right on path on that. You can really focus on that. And I think few things go a long way in really you know, creating a path for you. Number one, to my mind, is the honesty that uh, pays uh, very much. Uh, you need to be honest uh, with yourself uh, first and then with the organization. Uh, the second is that you need to be really uh, dedicated to the organization. I mean, there are many brilliant people who, but they are not really connected with the organization, then they are not able to really achieve those, you know, uh, landmarks or milestones which they should have otherwise. So I think you connect with the organization, your own honesty to yourself and to the organization, and 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 the hard work on this. And I don't, I don't, I think initially. Uh, while you may have some expectations and the younger people have their own aspiration to achieve certain things, certain milestones, important thing is that really you focus and devote on work and learning. I think that's one thing that is very important. When you go through that learning path, I think you are more confident, you're more uh, involved in the organization, you can contribute more and you will be recognized also more. So I think... Uh, it's a combination of few things that an individual need to really uh, be conscious of that and practice it. But each person has its own way to really create its own path. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. That was extremely insightful. Um, Ms. Anuranjita, would you like to add on to this? So the question is, what should the youngsters be focused on? Is that what you want me to answer? On? What should they be focused on? And uh, along with their uh, professional journeys, how they can uh, work on their personal growth as well. So, you know, during New Year's, I do once I have two children. And every New Year, that's the only time I write actual yes. letters. I don't send emails or I don't send WhatsApp. So I actually write a note to my kids. And when I was writing it this year, and one is 24 and the other is 18, so very close to the age group here, uh, I was telling them three things. One is, you know, take risk, fly, soar, don't stop, right? I think if I was to go back in time, and they asked me, mom, that if you were to go back in time, what would you do differently? And one of the things I told them, I said, I would have started my entrepreneurship much earlier. I was too focused on financial security because that's what I was brought up on. And so, you know, in my time, being settled for a girl meant shadi karado, achhe armi se, or ya ek achhi nokri lag jayegi. And I think as much as the Indian entrepreneurial ecosystem has come a long way from where it was, and it's yet got to go a long way. We are nowhere close to the West Coast. But the resources today available to youngsters like you are very different. So I'm not saying everybody needs to be an entrepreneur, but even if you are joining the corporate world, Try different things, you know, don't get complacent because that's the death knell of, you know, getting comfortable. So get comfortable with being uncomfortable in some way. So that would be one. Second is, you know, often at my generational level, we talk about, you know, kids wanting work-life balance. The reality is there's nothing called work-life balance, you know, and it is often confused with 50-50 my experience has been there are days where I love my work and I work 100%. There are days I have to be more focused on family. So find your own balance, you know, find your own definition of what is work and what is life. For me, you know, the boundary is very blurred and work is a very, very significant part of who I am. It's part of my identity. But at the same time, you don't become a slave of it. Like in India, generally, you know, one of the things when I came back to India, I saw that people work very late, right? And uh, so we could be more efficient, but how do you go about this? So find your balance, find what you, um, you know, what you love to do uh, and relate to it. And uh, third, I would say is, you know, I would mm -hmm. echo what uh, Mr. Shok just said about learning. I think, you know, um, even at my age and what I do, I have to change my lens every day. You know, there are certain things I carry from 25, 30 years of experience, but I have to learn, you know, if a chat GPT is launched, I have to learn what's happening with chat GPT as much as I have to leverage my experience about what's written in the books. So for me, there's a very, very simple message. And I love this line. I picked it up from somewhere else, but I will read it out to all of you and I will dedicate it to all the students of soil. Uh, it basically says, Abhi to asli manzil pana baki hai. Abhi to iradon ka imtihan baki hai. Abhi to toli hai, mutti par zameen. 
abhi tolna sara aasman baaki hai so you will define your own future you will define your own you know milestones i think we can only guide you so let this not restrict you you leverage our wisdom and experience but redefine the future for yourself beautiful beautiful ma'am thank you so much as in so you gave a different sort of depth to the whole question and what we were looking for uh we'll now invite uh, isha for the last question of the session please you want my input for that question definitely sir please so uh, sorry but, but uh, <laughs> this this webinar is is till 8 or 8:30 uh so it was i think uh, till 8 itself Ah, so then you are already past eight. So be very conscious of the time because the people are beginning to leave. And I think yes, one sir. of you, after Isha asks whatever she wants to or make a comment, one of you needs to summarize and close the webinar. Yeah, thank you very much. Definitely, sir. Yes, sir. Only one point I would like to make on personal growth. One is that uh, uh, don't go to organization as an expert. go as a learner and try to do the job that you can be noticed there is reluctance today amongst hr professionals to start with the factory to go to the manufacturing level and uh, that is because not cozy to be there so i think first of all we need to disturb our own comfort zone and demonstrate that i am here to do the real work and learn that is one and second is diagnosis research because we are dealing with human issues so there is no scope for ready made solutions judgments on the contrary if line managers show that we need to be diagnostic ask more question that is my second and third thing of course is observing very sensitively leaders and non leaders both we learn from both i have learned in my life more from non leaders because i knew how not to lead as much as from leaders how to lead this much i wanted to share thank you thank you so much sir that was uh, it would have been unfortunate if you would have missed on that thank you so much Now, uh, Isha, may I please welcome you now for all? Uh... Yes, sure. Um, thanks, everyone, for all the amazing viewpoints that you brought to light this evening. I just have a small question, and it's open. Anybody can answer. Sure, would you also like to introduce yourself quickly? What you're doing um, right now? Yes, sure. So, before soil, I was an engineer. I'm an engineer turned HR. That's how I like to put it. I worked with IBM, Grofers, Locunav, and currently I'm working with Times Internet. as an employee experience manager so my question is also in the realm of that so i just wanted your perspective or a viewpoint on how different generations are being dealt from an experience point of view uh, so we we are dealing with about 3 to 4 odd generations in our workplace and experience means different a different thing for each of those generations there's a very thin line between a benefit privilege and power how as hr professionals do we strike that chord beautifully amongst generations and how, where do we draw the line that we are not even spoiling for the sake of hiring and uh, say the and after the great reshuffle a lot of people are also leaving and joining back so how do we maintain <coughs> that balance uh, the question is open to the panel <laughs> it will run uh to answer this tough question i think respect is the core for each generation learning is the device for each generation and hierarchy neutral mind i think a combination of these can really uh, make all generations thrive together beautiful thank you mr anil i would just add to it i think isha you know you talked about privilege and power i think uh, you know when i was growing up i told you i left and ran away from medical school my mom yes. thought that was a privilege my son very lately you know he used to study in uh, a tech uh, college called carnegie mellon left that went into eco it's his privilege yes. so i think that's a generational thing 
Mm. I think uh, apart from respect, which I agree with, it's also responsibility. Be hold yourself accountable for your decisions. You know, when you want freedom and you want to rebel against the norms of the past, remember it comes at the cost of responsibility of your actions. So whether you work in the corporate world, you do something on your own, uh, owning up would be important. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a difficult uh, uh, thing to really meet the 100% aspirations of all the generations there. But I think more and more organizations are really uh, conscious. They are creating that cultural uh, you know, shift that uh, you, know, you have that respect, you have that appreciation of uh, you know, different uh, 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 lifestyles, uh, way of working. And that is part of the diversity that uh, I think organizations are focusing on right now. Sure. Thanks for sharing your perspective. Um, thank you so much. Uh, I'll just like to sum it up that leadership and uh, learning are indispensable to each other. And we had the opportunity to experience just that in this session. I'd like to thank the panel uh, on behalf of the student cohort for your presence here and sharing your experiences and journeys. I am uh, definitely sure that this has been an equally amazing experience for everybody present here. And uh, I would now like to uh, invite Ms. Arja Chakravarti, our uh, program chair for HRLP for the vote of thanks, please. Um, I, I, just, to... I just want to say thank you to all the three panelists. Great job. And thank you, students. Uh, wonderful thank job. Thank you very much. Thank you. I now need to run to my offsite. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank, so you. Just, thank you. Thank you. I will just say that I have no words. I was uh, uh, totally glued on to your words. Uh, Anuranjita, Mr. Ashok, uh, Stanley Kandelwal. And um, I think, uh, uh, you know, the future leaders, the future HR managers who are attending uh, this webinar and uh, some of the students who are part of the webinar and have been asking the questions, they learn a lot when you speak to them from your heart and you tell them about uh, that you also had palpitations and you also were not sure and you went about it and the tunnel was dark and there was light at the end. I think listening to your um, your rendition of what you went through in your careers really, really matters uh, to bridge this gap between what we are doing in the classrooms and what they will be actually responsible for, uh, you know, as they step into their roles in about a few months. At Soil, we have a saying, we say, uh, you know, first of all, you have to be aware, aware about, who you are, uh, the world around you, and then you have to care, uh, really have empathy, kindness, uh, care for what you are doing and for others. And once you do that, it doesn't stop because you have to dare. So I think uh, your words really confirmed our belief that at Soil, uh, we hope our students, uh, you know, are able to learn from you all and move ahead. I can't express my uh, thankfulness uh, for you being Thank you. taking time out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank everyone. you. Thank you. Uh, Thank so you. Everyone, I would just request um, everyone. Uh, so I'll quickly uh, click a picture of yes. the panel panelists. Yes, uh, and sure. uh, on, on count of three, I would just request everyone to smile. Right. One, two, three. Smile. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Akshay. Thank you, Isha. Thank you, Anupriya. Guys, nice, excellent job. Akshay, uh, Mahadgeet, and Anupriya, very well done. Um, good job. I, I 